Youth intakes in Football Manager can be both extremely rewarding, but also super frustrating. In today's video, though, we'll try to reduce those frustrations by showing you exactly how you can get the best youth intakes in FM. Hello everyone, Jake here for FM Scout and as mentioned in today's video we'll be running you through how you can get the best youth intakes in Football Manager. Plenty of different things we need to go through, things that have major effects, some that have very minimal effects and some that we're not even too sure about ourselves. But before we get into it all, if you guys could show your support by smashing that like button, we would massively appreciate it. it let us know that you enjoy the content and we'll help push it out to as many people as possible. Subscribe for more as we try and get 150 thousand subscribers. Feel free to let us know in the comments if you think there's something else that we didn't cover that can help improve your youth intakes. But in today's video, we'll be focusing on those that have been confirmed by SI employees on forums over the years to actually help. So the first thing that we should cover is that there is no guaranteed way to every single time get an amazing golden generation youth intake. It will be pretty much impossible the same way that it would be in real life for a club to produce world-class players every single year. There's going to be some years where you just have a few duds. But how I like to think of it in Football Manager, the analogy that I always use is imagine it as a lottery. So you're trying to win the lottery. Obviously, we all want to win the lottery, aka get a golden generation in FM, but it's never guaranteed and there is some randomness to it. But what you can do to increase your chances of winning the lottery is to buy as many tickets as possible. And I want you to imagine every tip that we give in this video as a little ticket, where if you do all of them, you're greatly increasing your chances of making that great youth intake come through. The other slightly theoretical thing that we need to cover is the fact that every team's golden generation will be different in the sense that if you have a golden generation at Dortmund that's a five-star golden generation, that's obviously way better than the five-star golden generation you might get at Wigan, say. Now, that might sound obvious to some, but a lot of people are fooled by it. If you don't know, the star ratings that it gives you are in comparison to players at your club. So a five-star player that might come out of Wigan's academy doesn't necessarily mean they'll be good enough to play in a Premier League. It just means in Wigan terms, they would be a very good player for Wigan. At the same time, if Borussia Dortmund got the exact same youth intake that Wigan had, even though it was a five-star youth intake for Wigan, Dortmund might class it as a two and a half star waste of space generation. So now we've covered those theoretical things, let's move into what can actually affect your youth intake. Starting with the ones that are fairly obvious, if you go to your club info screen and facilities, there are three things here that are going to affect the quality of youngster that you have come through in your youth intakes. And we'll start off at the bottom with the youth recruitment. Now what this does is it affects your imaginary under 12, under 13 teams that we obviously can't see in Football Manager, but the idea is that is where your youth intake comes from. Now, the better your youth recruitment, imagine it as you have a larger net to catch up and swoop these wonder kids from. If we took Chelsea, for example, if they have good youth recruitment, they might just be picking up youngsters from London. If you have excellent youth recruitment, you might be getting people from towns outside of London. And then if you have exceptional youth recruitment, the best of the best, you might be picking up players from all over the UK. Now, being able to cast this net wider, let's say, means that theoretically your academy scouts have got one thousand players instead of 500 to look at and therefore they're going to find more gems because they've got more players to look at so you're just trying to cast your net as wide as possible with your youth recruitment your junior coaching is exactly that it's the level of coaching that your junior players your under 15s 14s 13s are getting and obviously the higher caliber of junior coaching the better coaching they're getting and in theory the better players that will come out of your youth intakes one common misconception that i believe for a long time though was that the training facilities were for your first team and the youth facilities were for your under 21s your under 20s your under 18 squads that you can see in the game but it's not actually like that si have confirmed every player that you can see in your save whether it's first team players like this or it's your under 19s in the dev center, they are all using the training facilities and the youth facilities, again, are for these imaginary players that are coming through that we don't see until a youth intake happens. So in the same way that the junior coaching being good improves the quality of youngsters that come through in your youth intakes, it works the same for youth facilities. If they've got better pitches to play on, better equipment to use, the chances are better players are gonna come through in your youth intake. If you're not sure on how to improve your recruitment, coaching and facilities, 
all you need to do is come over to the club vision tab up here is make board request and assuming the board like you you can request upgrades over time until eventually they are maxed out you are capped at how many upgrades you can do at once another tip to greatly improve your youth intakes is to come over to the dev center onto the youth candidate screen and to smash that like button because if you do we are granting you all good luck for all of your youth intakes going forward probably won't work but you know give it a try press that like button see what happens one thing people may not consider makes a big difference so that actually does is your club's reputation. You can find this on your club info screen and right now for Dortmund we have a four and a half star reputation but it may not work the way that you think it does because on the SI forums a few years ago it was cleared up exactly how the reputation helps with your youth intakes. According to that employee the reputation acts as almost a tiebreaker let's say between two clubs if their youth recruitment are the same. So let's say we've got 17 youth recruitment and we came over to this club here at Lotte who have a youth recruitment of five but let's imagine it's the same as Borussia Dortmund's. How does the game decide where a youngster would likely go to? Well, in theory, these guys have only got a two-star reputation and we have a four-and-a-half-star reputation. So if you were the next up-and-coming footballer and both of these clubs approached you with the same youth recruitment net, which one would you go to? Well, realistically, you're going to choose the one with the highest reputation where there's more of a chance of you becoming a star and that is how reputation will help you in your youth intake. It doesn't mean, though, that this two-star club can't get these amazing players from their youth recruitment nets it will just mean it's less likely to happen again it goes back to our lottery ticket analogy where we're just trying to make little changes to do our best to win that grand prize of a great youth intake if you want to know how to get your reputation up it's pretty simple you just need to win 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 over years the more competitions you win the more matches you win the better your club does the better your team performs your reputation will go up over the years and will help with your youth intakes okay so we've gone through a pretty large chunk of what affects the youth intakes but there are a few things that still make differences one of which I didn't even mention on last year's video because I didn't actually believe it had an effect it's since been shown to me though that it actually should have an effect so we'll get onto that in a second but before we do I want to let you guys know I do have my own channel linked in the description where we have more let's play style videos going on we've got some one-off rebuilds on the channel for FM23 the most recent one is us trying to rebuild wolves in one video over five seasons and we also have an ongoing long-term series with less if you'd like to check that out you can find it all in the description i greatly appreciate anyone who does so even if you go over there and just hit subscribe it will still mean a lot but let's go and take a look at the staff member that can greatly affect your youth intakes and you've probably guessed already it is your head of youth development in this case we've got Lars Ricken looking dashing as ever at the top here now if you are a beginner player you might just look at him and go okay for head of youth development it's highlighted working with youngsters judging player ability and judging player potential that's all I need for a good head of youth development and I mean you're, you're kind of right I guess but there's a few other factors that will affect your quality of youth intake and in my opinion these are way more important than some of these attributes particularly things like working with youngsters I'm not sure how much of an effect that even has on youth players that come through but one thing that you should always look for in your head of youth development is their personality because this will rub off on the players. So here, Lars Ricken has a model professional personality, which is fantastic. It means that any players that come through are likely going to have a similar personality to him. It's not guaranteed for every single player, but you'll start to see it rub off on those youth intakes that come through. The same way if you had a head of youth development who was fickle, let's say, as a personality, then the players that come through, there's a good chance they'll be fickle. You get the idea. Whatever personality this guy has, it's going to rub off on those youngsters. Did you know, though, his preferred formation? will also affect the type of player that comes through. In this case, Lars Ricken, his preferred formation is a 4-2-3-1 DM attacking midfielder wide. So chances are when the youth intakes come through, you'll be seeing left backs and right backs, defensive midfielders as opposed to central midfielders, which might not seem like a massive thing. And it is still possible for him to produce a central midfielder or a wing back, but chances are the players are going to be aligned with his formation. Now the issue slash benefit of that will come depending on whether that formation matches what you're trying to play in game. If you wanted to play a 4-2-3-1, but Lars Ricken's favourite formation was a 4-4-2, he's going to produce left mids and right mids, maybe some defensive minded left sided and right sided midfielders as opposed to wingers. He's going to produce more central midfielders in the youth intakes than he is attacking midfielders and defensive midfielders. And if that doesn't align up with your club, sometimes you can get a great player coming through that you just can't find any use for. So I'd always suggest trying to find a head of youth development whose formation at least slightly fits 
what you're trying to go for with your team. Even with all of this considered, a lot of it is completely dwarfed by two factors that you can't actually see in-game without the pre-game editor. Now in this pre-game editor, you can look at every nation around the world, whether it be Germany, Peru, Honduras, Romania, whatever it is. Every nation has two hidden attributes that are under the hood in the game that you can't see that will greatly affect your youth intake. The first one is youth rating of a country. Now this is scored out of 200 and pretty simply what it determines is the ability of that nation to produce good young players. So for example, Brazil, you'll see a lot of wonder kids coming out of there. Argentina, the same thing. But you won't get so many Australian wonder kids or United States wonder kids or Romanian wonder kids, whatever it is. A big part of that is down to the youth rating. The higher the youth rating of a nation, the more likely they are to produce great youngsters. And that's based on real life. So in real life, we know there's been a lot of great Brazilians coming through in recent years, and therefore they have a high youth rating. And it's the opposite for clubs that haven't produced so many players over the years. They have a low youth rating. Before we get on to the other attribute, it should be noted that last year in FM22, they introduced for the first time what they called dynamic youth ratings. What this meant was if you took a nation like Romania, let's say, and you built them up to be a European powerhouse, they kept winning trophies. Let's say 20 years in the future, you're winning Champions Leagues. The other clubs in your nation have started to develop as you've brought more European spots to the country. This in theory would affect your youth rating because now there's clubs with better facilities, players wanting to play football more in that nation, and therefore you've got a greater chance of producing great Romanian wonder kids. Problem was, up until about halfway through FM22, this didn't work and they had to fix it with a patch. After they added this patch, it's debatable how much of an effect that it did have. I haven't done any tests myself personally, so I won't say conclusively, but I've seen a few videos where people test youth ratings over the course of a few years and they don't really move at all. I haven't seen too much about it for FM23. Maybe it was tweaked and fixed. Maybe it was actually fixed in that winter patch from last year. But from what I've heard, it's still not quite up to scratch. So take that with a pinch of salt. But in theory, the longer you play in a nation and the better you do, you can supposedly increase the youth rating of that nation. But there's also, as I mentioned, another attribute that greatly affects your youth intakes and that is game importance. What this is, is how important the game of football is to that nation. Obviously in Brazil, football is massive. Argentina, football is massive. England, football is massive. And therefore you've got loads of players playing football, which increases the chance of getting good players come through in the nation's youth intakes, not just for a single club, but for every club in that nation. However, for some nations, the match importance of football isn't high at all. Take the US, for example. They prefer a lot of sports compared to soccer, as they call it, and therefore their match importance isn't as high as some nations, and that leads to less kids in theory playing football, which then leads to less good players coming out of the youth intake. A lot of people don't know that those attributes exist under the hood, but they do. And unless you play a really long-term save, I don't think the dynamic youth rating is going to have much of an effect. So as far as I'm aware, you're kind of stuck with whatever you're stuck with at the start of your save, depending on what nation you're in. The final thing that I want to cover though is something that I didn't cover last year. It's all about affiliates. So every club can have affiliate clubs, often with certain agreements between the two. For example, Dortmund here have an agreement with Thailand club Buriam United. United where they share scouting knowledge. So Biriam United get Dortmund scouting knowledge and vice versa. That's great for the Thai club, but what Dortmund get out of it is a major benefit to all merchandise sales in the nation of Thailand. So that's a specific type of affiliate club that obviously isn't going to affect your youth intake. The same goes for this Japanese affiliate. However, if we come to this one here, an Australian club called Marconi Stallions, they're a semi-professional club. And again, they share scouting knowledge and they get a major benefit from merchandise sales in in Australia. But look at this extra thing up here. Marconi Stallions may send academy players to train at Dortmund to gain experience. We as Dortmund might get a benefit of having some of these players coming through their youth team rank. So what this means is when you have a youth intake, even though your youth recruitment net is going to be in Germany and you're mainly getting German players in your youth intake, you might see an Australian player popping out every now and then. And that is down to your link with your affiliate. So the more affiliates you can have with this kind of link, the greater your net is again, for your youth intakes and the chances of you getting better young players in those intakes is increased. Now, when I was writing my script for this video, I had to think, and now I realize the amount of times I've seen a amazing Australian wonder kid come through Dortmund. Come to think of it, a few years ago, I had a save with Vitesse where we spent 50 or 60 million pounds on a player from Borussia Dortmund who was an Australian
Australian wonder kid that had somehow came through their academy. Now I know exactly why. So clearly it can have an effect. And if it doesn't, then I have no idea why the game would list it in such a way. But from everything I can tell, it does work. So if you can get affiliate clubs with this kind of link, that again is going to buy you more tickets in the youth intake raffle. And the final thing I'll mention is if you don't have affiliate clubs and you want to know how, again, it's on the board request. I think it comes under networking. Affiliate club, you can recommend it. Once you go into that, you'll have a conversation with the board about why you want to set up an affiliate club. You choose the reason, and I believe one of those reasons will be to take youngsters from that nation. Depending on how much your board like you, they'll either say no or they'll say yes. Sometimes they'll even let you pick the affiliate club yourself if you have a good reputation at the club. So all of these things can affect youth intakes, but again, it's never going to be guaranteed. But if you do all of this, it can greatly increase your chances of a youth intake. If you think something else does, let me know in the comments and I can test it out. I'm wishing you all the best with your youth intakes. Don't forget to like the video if you did enjoy. Subscribe for more. Check out my channel in the description. But most of all, have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.